I'm attorney Michelle Moss, and welcome to IP Poolside Chats. Why? Because I'm in Orlando, and IP is better when it's poolside. In part one of today's IP Poolside Chat, we're going to be discussing trademark strength. A lot of people ask me, Michelle, what makes a trademark strong? Well, remember, the purpose of a trademark is to do two things. One, it has to identify the source of goods or services, and then it has to distinguish those goods or services from others in the marketplace. In order to do that, a strong trademark has to be distinctive. That's the word you want to focus on. The more distinctive and unique a mark is, the easier it is to legally register and to legally protect against others in cases of infringement. So at the low end of the spectrum, as far as distinctiveness, we have generic and descriptive marks. Generic marks are terms that are the accepted uh, terms that are used to describe uh, the goods and services. For example, com computer software, or a coffee filter, or real estate office, or accounting service, or tax preparer. Uh, these types of uh, marks are, dis are not distinctive enough. They're in fact the generic terms that any business or any other uh, person offering those types of services would use. Therefore, they're not able to be legally registered and they're very hard to protect. The next step up from generic terms are descriptive terms. And these are marks that are descriptive of the goods or services being offered or some characteristic of the goods and services. For example, if I had a store that sold candy and I called it Candyland, or if I had a, sto a store that sold used tires and I called it Tire World. Uh, those types of marks are descriptive of the actual goods and services. So any other business that sold tires or sold candy in a store might use those same terms. So you can see how generic and descriptive terms are not very distinctive and therefore are weak marks. Thank you for joining me for today's IP Poolside Chat. And remember, IP is better when it's poolside.